I'm going to introduce you to three things today. Firstly, and my apologies, I don't actually know his name, but we have our model octopus. As you're sitting there, you might be able to imagine how this octopus moves, you know, the flexibility, the dexterity in those tentacles. What's really interesting about this is that there's actually nothing in this picture which lets you know about those movements you're now imagining. What you're imagining now is based on your previous experiences. Things get a little bit more difficult when we work with um, things at a molecular level. We can no longer rely on our past experiences, our five senses, to help us understand how things behave. In the case of proteins, um, the traditional metric for describing proteins has been X-ray crystallography. That is taking a picture or an image of a protein. It's actually becoming increasingly apparent that this is actually not appropriate for many types of proteins. I mean, in particular, many proteins are quite dynamic, very flexible, um, and in a sense, quite unstructured or disordered. What's really interesting and important for us is that um, the parasite that causes malaria actually has a large number of these disordered proteins. So the question we're coming to this with is, how does our immune system respond to these unstructured, flexible, disordered proteins? And are these worthwhile candidates for vaccine development? Um, so we turn to computational predictive approaches to try and answer this question. Um, critically, we've shown that um, within the malaria parasite, these proteins are mostly expressed on the surface of the parasite, on the immunologically exposed parts of the parasite. Um, furthermore, the presentation of these proteins by the immune system to initiate long-lasting um, robust immune responses is actually significantly reduced. Um, so these are all things that we really have to keep in mind when developing a vaccine for malaria. Um, and finally, we've got the question of why. Why are we doing this? I could give you economic reasons, I could give you social reasons, I could give you political reasons even for the work we're doing here. I could tell you that um, you know, probably over half a million people die from malaria each year, most of them children. But the thing that's most important for a lot of us doing this work, the thing that we need to remind ourselves of more often than not, is this. Behind each statistic, there is a picture. And behind each picture, there is a person. Thank you.